Facebook. Right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, my dear sister, Timmy O'Malley. It's a pleasure uh, to be here. Yeah. Thanks, you guys, for being here to our Seeds Storyteller Series with the extraordinary Timmy O'Malley. I'm going to tell you about what she's up to and um, how you can join the fun here in a minute. Um, but before we dive in, Timmy, where are you coming to us from? I'm actually, I'm in Seaside, California today. As I was just yeah. telling Sarah, there's this magnificent storm rolling in over the Pacific Ocean. It's, it's a beautiful day here in, in the central coast of California. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining. This makes me just love the gift of connectivity of technology that we can be with each other from Denver to Seaside Absolutely. and then people around the world. So wherever you're coming to us from, friends, welcome. We believe there are no accidents. And if you stumbled upon this live now or in the replay, um, it's the stuff of destiny. So stay tuned for, for uh, the goodness coming. Um, so before we dive in and I, I tell you about my amazing friend, Timmy, I want to tell you that this conversation, these series of conversations that uh, we are having with incredible people around the world in the Seeds Storyteller series is really about introducing us and one another to incredibly inspiring people from around the world, not in that like armchair, like sit back and watch way, but like that, whoa, I now got a, a few clues for my next steps or what matters to me or what I want to be about. Um, and please, we hope um, one of the ripples is connecting with Timmy and I um, and keeping this conversation going. So if this is something that you are loving or someone comes to mind that you think might be fun to share it with, please share, please comment. We will not be um, responding via the chat right away, but we will after um, the call because that is one of the hopes and dreams of this for Timmy and I. Um, so quickly, and then we're gonna dive in in a minute, but my dear sister Timmy is, um, she's just published and launched on Saturday, her book called Consuming Love, The Joy of Sharing Meals. And um, Timmy is a passionate foodie who is focused on creating and sharing more love in the world. And that is the truth. She has become increasingly concerned that we're paying more attention to our devices than to each other at the table. What a perfect time to be having this conversation as many of us are in the throes of, of holiday season parties and feasts. The stories relayed in her book, It's a Beauty, um, demonstrate how nourishing it can be to be together. She encourages us to put down our devices and create community and connection for growth in order to thrive. So thank you for joining, for sharing your story with us and, and your love. It's a gift. Yeah. Thank you. It's, a, it's an honor to be here with everyone. Yeah, and note, y'all, in the um, description of this live, there are all kinds of links and, and beautiful, soulful, powerful nudges from Timmy around um, creating community around the table um, and a link to her book. So we're not going to go into all that here because we want to get to the story. Um, and me, my name is Sarah Davison Tracy. I also am an author. I just published two books this year called Live Ablaze and Light Up the World and Soulfully Ablaze, Your 40-Day Journey to Light Up Your Life in the World. <laughs> and um, I also am the founder of, uh, of an amazing community organization called Seeds of Exchange. And that is just this. It's gathering people together to talk about what really matters to each of us and what is beckoning our attention in the world and what we want to do together to uh, make an impact, to bring some light, to bring some love, to bring some beauty, whatever it is to do it together. So if that intrigues you, join the conversation. We got a lot to do together for sure. So before we get into Timmy's story, I want to uh, start this call, this conversation, as we do most of our meetings, events, virtual or in person, um, with a place of pause, um, a moment to be still. So we acknowledge that some people, it's the middle of the night for you. It might be the end of your day if you're coming to us from a different part of the world. Some may be at work, some may be shopping or driving, wherever you are. 
we want to drop this seed of peace and um, just a place to be uh, and to catch your breath. So um, if you're at a place where you can close your eyes without um, being dangerous, i.e. driving, please do. And um, just take a moment and feel your feet on the ground and just sink into whatever it is that you're sitting or standing in. So be still, surrender, helplessness and overwhelm, excitement and possibility, worry and anxiety, strategizing and thinking. Set these and any other thoughts aside that are floating or bombarding. Let them go, soften, gently smile. Inhale and exhale, big and fully. Breathe, just breathe. Be, just be. Take one more big juicy breath. Thanks y'all. It's uh, important to stop and do that. I need the reason I wrote those into my books is because I need them like life, like air. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so yeah. as we dive into this conversation with this incredible soul sister to me, please pay attention to what grips your heart, what grips your gut, what brings tears to your eyes. Those are clues for the journey meant for you and only you. And uh, she's an inspiring one. So let's, let's mm -hmm. dig in. So my dear sister, we're going to talk a little bit about this book, Consuming Love, The Joy of Sharing Meals. Mm -hmm. But before we get to that, um, would it be all right if we start with, with the why of Timmy O'Malley? Why, why did you write this book? Why this passion um, to share this message? Oh, absolutely. Well, it's interesting that about a year and a half ago, I was inspired automatically like a flash of light in my mind that it was time to say what I needed to say. I have um, my entire life, I, I have sought love, right? It's been my primary motivation. And around the table is where I've been able to give and receive that love that I've craved my entire life. And I have these intense memories from being a very young girl all the way through my life of these wonderful experiences at the table. And it's not only just about the food. The food is always, I love food. <laughs> it's about the incredible people that I've been able to experience and share with at the table. Uh -huh. And then how that's actually shaped me, these, these experiences where I have allowed the interaction between these, these amazing people to shift my beliefs, shift my perception of life, and then sometimes hold their hand and take a totally different direction based on something that they've suggested. Yeah. And when I look back on how powerful and magical being at the table with others has been in my life. I realized that it's this very core human experience that we have, we all share. It's, it's something that is completely nourishing and enriching when you allow it to happen over and over and over again. And the, the reason I was inspired to actually put it on paper and create it into a book is because I'm in the food industry and I'm seeing over, all over the place in restaurants. I spend a lot of time in restaurants. Yeah. Is that people are habitually distracted by their devices. Hmm. And so there is this, this worry and this concern in my heart about how we're limiting the nourishing experience of actually being together. If we're sitting across the table from someone we love and we're actually spending more attention to the device that's in front of us, rather than being with the food or with the person that's across from us, how are we engaging in that? Why is that important, right? And so 
I wanted to share these stories as a demonstration of how important it is and reevaluate, perhaps reevaluate. Do we really need that device in front of us while we're enjoying that meal? Is how is it impacting our ability to actually have that that rich interaction yep. with those that we're with rather than the constant news feeds or the Facebook posts that will be there after that half an hour interaction of a meal, yep. which then can nourish our souls as opposed to just being this numbing activity. Mm. You know, I, I don't want to be, I, I don't want to be just nice about it really. Mm. I, I'm kind of, I'm really irritated about it. And I think we need to set some clear boundaries and the expectation needs to be that if you're with me, I want you to be with me. I don't want you to be with that device. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to, um, I guess, very politely say, put it away, put yep. it away and let's be together because this is the rich experience. And, you know, when I spend so much time with these amazingly talented chefs that have poured their heart and their soul into the food yeah. that they're preparing. Yeah. And then you're sitting at a table and you're just blindly and not even paying attention at all, just shoveling it into your mouth. And then yep. how sad is that? Right. right? So that's what inspired the book. And, um, I love it. and I'm really, I'm, I, it was a joy to write because it took mm -hmm. me back through those memories and those experiences and those wonderful interactions that were really rich. Yeah. And I feel so blessed to have experienced them and, you know, know that I'm committed to presence with yeah. the people I'm with at the table. Presence is oh. what actually nourishes us. It's that loving, kind acceptance to be together. Yeah. But I want to feel... reinvigorate that, 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 that discussion of how important that is. And you've done it. I want to read one, one opening that I just love so very, very much. Um, literally page one in the book, I, I read it and I just gasped and thought, oh, I got to share this when, when we have our conversation. So um, this is literally page one in the book. And uh, Timmy starts it this way. This is a love story. In fact, it tells of a passionate love affair with food. And it's not just about food and how it makes you feel. It's recognition and honoring of each offering that allows us to flourish. With every meal and every breath, we can be grateful. In each moment, we have the presence of love available to us, and it can build a community in this. It can build community in this presence that fuels the entire universe. So that's the invitation, right? To be sitting and be present to the feast of flavors that these chefs, as you talk about, have, have been laboring and creating, and then the feast of community and conversation and being together. And so, so tell us, tell us about your book. What are a few, um, a few of the stories, maybe one or two that, that are close to your heart that you were able to share with the world um, when you published this book? Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, when they're, <laughs> where do you start? I, yeah. Right. Where do I start? That's a great question. It's a great question. And, and I, I had fun writing the stories because I, I take you with me on my journey or around the world. And it starts of course, in, in where I'm born and raised in S Southern California. And then I go to New York and then India back to California, then Mexico um, and Thailand, and then back to the coast of central California. And it actually, it's a, it's a story of my spiritual development and how um, I came to understand that love is really the most important energy that there is in the world. And it's really become not only my, my motivation in life, but it's my pure focus of creating more love in the world. Yeah. And I believe that we can do this at the table. Yeah. I've been shown that over and over and over again. And so yeah. um, to answer your question, I think that I could start with my grandmother where this all started. She was the hostess with the mostest, right? She would invite anybody and everybody to her home mm. to feed them, anyone who would come. And it became apparent to me as a very young girl that not only was the food offering different flavors at the table, but in our expression, 
our various expressions of our personalities and who we are, we all offer a different flavor. Yeah. And I came to love all of it, right? Yeah. Some of it didn't feel really good. Mm. Some of it was confusing and some of, you know, these, these, the different tones or the behaviors that we would bring, um, they were confusing to my little young precious heart and I didn't quite understand it. But I came to understand throughout my life that it's all expressions of love. And sometimes the fear that's expressed is just a masked expression of the love that's desired. And so the book started as an honoring of my family tradition and the bringing of anybody and everybody who would come to the table. Mm -hmm. And for that, I love my grandmother. Yeah. And she taught me from a very young age to always put love in your food. Always put love in your food. It's the, mm. the most important ingredient. And I've been told that again and again and again throughout yeah. my life. And in, that, in my, my younger adult years, I didn't really treat myself with that understanding. I didn't treat right. life with the understanding that it's not just the most important ingredient in our food. It's the most important ingredient in all of life. Yeah. And so if we have an understanding of that, then yeah. we can create more of that. Yeah. And that's, that's what started the writings. And so from a very young age in Southern California, enjoying the rich gardens of her property yeah. and the long tables and the laughter yes. and the gossip and the arguments about politics or sports or things that would be difficult, right? There yeah. was always that embracing of we're here together. Yeah. This is our opportunity to enjoy each other. And it always made me feel so loved. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and man, I, I want to, one thing that just struck me so big when you were just talking is, um, and you and I have talked about this several times, but especially in the midst of, of the holiday season and any, any big moments in our lives at these long tables, may we be blessed with the moments of laughter and beauty and feasting. But, but we also know that there's a lot of pain sometimes at these tables, whether it's a teeny tiny table for two or a big long one, like you're talking about at your grandmother's. And I guess I would love just because I, I so appreciate your lens of love in the world. What's been, what's the, uh, something that you have been learning and a, and a little nugget of encouragement to those that are, you know, maybe lonely at the table or, um, having conflict with others at the table of life or at the literal food table? Like what, what's your kind of story and message around those moments, the hard yeah. ones. Yeah. And we've all had them, right? right. And, you know, it, the table is also actually a perfect um, place for conflict as well. I mean, we all yeah. um, hang on to our beliefs and mm -hmm. it's through our beliefs that our perceptions um, come through that lens, lens of our belief. And mm -hmm. so especially during this holiday season, I think it's so very important to um, recognize that love is at the core of who we all are. Mm. Love exists in all of our hearts. Mm. And with that understanding alone, I think we can come to a place of creating more compassion, not only for ourselves and starting with ourselves, but also with those that we're sharing the meal with. And so Sarah, as you and I were talking, you know, it's that these meals can be challenging. Yeah. Um, so if we can have compassion and come from a place of understanding that somebody's holding on to a belief for a reason, mm -hmm. they may not understand it, but if it triggers you in any way and it makes you uncomfortable in any way, and I, I try to take this as an opportunity for self-reflection. If I'm with an, with a group of people or something and, and, an emotion comes up in me that I don't quite understand or particularly like, I say to myself, hmm, isn't that interesting? What is it about, what is it within me that doesn't like that? Mm. 
Mm. Sometimes it's something that's maybe a shadow side or whatever, but sure. before getting too deep into it, what I just like to say is offer yourself the, the opportunity just to recognize it and love it. Mm-hmm. Love that feeling. If anger comes up, up, up within you, love the anger. The anger is a part of you. And so love it. It's a chance. It's an opportunity to love it. When uncle Bob brings up a topic at the table that you don't agree with, love uncle Bob. You have an opportunity to be with him. That's the gift. That's the gift. And, and when he triggers you, that's the gift. Wow. You don't have to like it. Right. And so there's actually, there's a, um, a chapter in the book as well. It's a meditation on acceptance and non-judgment. And it's simply a meditation about eating a strawberry and how hmm. without any kind of preconceived judgment about that strawberry or what it's going to offer, mm-hmm. if we can just accept the nourishment that it brings, then it actually nourishes us more deeply. And so if at the holiday table, if I could offer each of you just the opportunity to love whatever is, just love it. Wow. You'll find perhaps that it is just a more uh, peaceful experience Mm -hmm. because it's when we fight what is that then there's conflict. And so if we can just accept what is, right. See what happens. Just see what happens. Mm. Mm. Thank you. That's beautiful. Mm. Um, And that's what I think is so important, right. To, to make sure we walk into these feasts, whether it's, you know, holidays or just, you know, everyday life and, and have some, some nudges of wisdom like this of what to do when, when it turns from idyllic to uh, complicated and and charged. And that's why I love your message because it's so, it's, it's not like a airy fairy Pollyanna feast that you're talking about in consuming love. It's, it's about like the feast of, of humanity and being together at these tables throughout our lives and just showing up with love and, and presence. And, um, it's incredible. Um, could you speak, could you speak for a minute, Timmy, to people that are watching that have some, either they're in the middle of some kind of creative endeavor like a dream of writing a book uh, or a film or doing something, um, some kind of work that's rooted in their passion and in their why. Maybe something um, both that's, that, that was a valuable thing to you in the midst of like a hard moment in, in getting this book out into the world, because we know that there are plenty and just anything that comes to your soulful heart about, um, you know, encouraging our, our peeps wherever they yeah. are. Absolutely. So for me, it really, it, it really only worked to take that moment of pause that Sarah, it loves to talk about. I think that that is so important that I had to actually take myself out of my day-to-day experience, my regular activity. And oftentimes I had to take myself out of my home and my office because there are distractions. Got and it. So in each, each time I would put one step in front of the other. And it took a year and a half to write this book. I do, you know, I work a full-time job and I, I didn't use that as an excuse to keep me from moving forward because I felt so passionately about the story I wanted to share. But what I had to do was take myself to a new environment where I wouldn't be distracted by right. anything in my day-to-day activity. And I found that so useful. Right. I set time aside, right? Um, on weekends, I would go somewhere that was inspiring with a great view and, and I would sit and let the stories come through me rather than forcing them. It was a, a very fine line between that. And I felt the difference yeah. when I would find myself needing to, needing to say something, yep. I would drop in and get quiet yeah. and then let yeah. the words flow. And so I really did feel at the end of all of it, before the editing process, of course, started and we were analyzing, you know, was I saying exactly what I wanted to say? Right. I just let the words flow. Mm -hmm. They came through and, and that was the pure joy of writing. Um, Mm -hmm. And when you get into that, that space of time where it just disappears. Yeah. That feels so yummy. It's just like, oh, I want more of that. And so there are more, more things that want to come through, but really 
honoring that creative space and not a, not everybody needs to do what I what I did. Some people feel more comfortable in their office space and that's great. Yeah. But really getting in identifying where does the flow happen and then making making it happen over and over again and baby steps before I knew it, she was published. <laughs> It's like such a crazy thing. I remember the moment where you texted me and you said, oh my gosh, I'm holding my book. Uh -huh. you know, hands and that thing of, you know, it really is a, a pretty beautiful, creative um, birthing process, right? Of like bringing it into the world and holding a physical something. So just we, Timmy and I just want to encourage anyone, if you have that an old passion or a brand new one that that something in Timmy's story has sparked. Um, follow the follow the breadcrumbs, you know, follow the treasure hunt, um, because that's what makes this community so beautiful, like prismatic with diversity of expression and ways that we tell our stories. I believe we're all storytellers. We have all these different tools and, and um, ways we share them with the world. So whatever's in you percolating, please, please follow it. Um, so I would love to um, take a moment and loop back to those that are, uh, have joined us on this live or on the replay and, and ask you to just, we're, we're going to take another brief moment of pause just to let yourself, give yourself a moment to see what is um, bubbling to the surface of your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, of um, that's beckoning your attention, that's clamoring for you to do something anew, uh, to act, to think, to speak, um, because there's something that happens in that kind of soulful place of pause when it really comes from not like a should or a need or a pressure from the outside but like comes from the inside and you act on it like right away take a take a little step or a big leap who cares which of action um so please we invite you to comment like what what is that for you um to share with a live human being you know what timmy's talking about like like a physical person these virtual things are amazing and we will take we will take them and use the gift of them. But there's something about sitting across the table or having a cup of tea with someone. So please share with one person what's um, what's what's capturing your attention in that like uh, fiery way or attentive way. Um, so we're just going to take a moment and and literally just take a couple deep breaths. And I want I want to not talk and let you. Um, see what, what comes to the surface. All right. So just a super big inhale. Soften your brow and your jaw. And just ask what's, what's the message meant for me today? What would feel really good to do or think or be anew. And please comment and tell us. And I, I would love, Timmy, when we were talking about these moments, these golden nuggets of being still, you shared a really beautiful thing that I had never heard before with me. Would you share the rest of our peeps since that came, since you shared that before we were live on, on why breath and being still is so important. Oh yeah, I would love to. So um, I'm actually a certified heart math trainer. And if none of you are aware of what heart math is, it's actually a, a scientific organization in central California that has been for three decades studying the impact of the energy of the heart in our bodies. And in Western culture, we spend so much time and attention and focus on our minds. And yet it's actually, it's the power of the heart. Yeah that keeps our energy and our body aligned and allows for coherence and creative expression and peace and, and joy and all of those things. And so in this moment of, of pause, and all of you can do this anywhere at any time, simply place your attention on your heart space. When you breathe in, 
and breathe out. And if it helps, you can actually put, physically put your hand on your heart or you don't have to, but anything, that, any attention at all that you can actually put into that center of your chest. In your breath, it, it settles the heart variability down and brings you to a place of harmony. And it aligns the body in the, in the physical way in order to receive and to give. Mm. And it's in that breath and that heart space. So I like to use this technique before starting meetings, before having a conversation. It brings you into a present moment awareness that is powerful. Mm. Our hearts are powerful and they're connected. So when I come into coherence, you come into coherence. Mm -hmm. Think of that. That is just so miraculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So spend time in your heart. Thank you. Mm. Um, I'll make sure I include that in our, I'll add that to our write-ups so you can learn more. I want to learn more about, about that research and organization. It's amazing. Um, and as always, y'all, if, if there's anything going on in your world that's too um, painful or difficult to post in the, in the comments, but you want to ask for some extra love or prayer or um, just in a place of pain, please private message me and if, if give me permission to share it with Timmy and, and we will hold you with extra um, love and support because I believe we, whether we're on a high or a low, we cannot get very far. Uh, alone. And it's just, it's just better together. Mm -hmm. So um, if that's where you find yourself, maybe that's why you're here. Please reach out and ask for a little, whatever it is that you need, and we'll do whatever we can to support you. Um, so Timmy, before we wrap up, I would love for you to share one last, like what, what's a burning last seed to plant in the hearts and laps and minds of our friends that are watching? I've already said it, but I, again, I think it's just really, really important. So I'm going to say it again. Yeah. Just put your devices to, aside and be with the ones that you're with. Yep. And it's so simple yeah. and that we need to put effort into creating this experience again, that is central to the human experience. Yeah. And cr by creating more love, we need to be together. So yeah. maybe this holiday season, you put a basket in the living room and ask everybody to put their devices in the basket. And, you know, I think it's really important for the young generation that's being trained yeah. right now to be attached to their devices all the time. We need to maybe train them that it's okay to be away from their device for half an hour to enjoy a meal with their family and their friends. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And let, let your friends and your loved ones nourish you. I'll take a picture of my device basket for uh the Excellent. holiday yeah <laughs> let's let's start a movement <laughs> <laughs> i love it yeah. well um as i said y'all i have in the um write up i have link the link on where you can buy timmy's book um she's tagged in the video so you can connect with her directly if if you want to continue the conversation um it just makes it more rich when we have people to to roll with through life. So mm. please, please do it. Um, so blessings and have a beautiful rest of your day. Um, we just want to remind you that you're loved. You belong here. We belong to each other. And um, together, when we stand tall, uh, we light up the world and life is good. So Thank you, love Sarah. you guys. Love. Thank you, Timmy. <laughs> Bye. Bye.